Hi everyone, so what I'm going to do here is build a really quick uh, die to bend some stainless steel. What I want to do is take this piece of stainless steel here and I want to bend a little V in it um, to help support a piece of pipe uh, that's actually already installed and it's holding up a, a circulating pump. So I feel like build a quick die, um, probably just a little bit of welding and we'll put it in the press and see what happens. Now these are just scrap pieces I have lying around and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this angle iron and tack them to these plates and we'll use that to bend the groove. So this is about six inches wide, this one's six inches wide, and this one here is about seven and a half. So this will all work together. So I'm going to go and cut three pieces six inches wide out of this angle iron. You can see here I'm cutting it in the bandsaw and I have a couple of pieces already cut or well, second one's been cut and I put a stopper on the end. This helps increase repeatability and I don't have to go and measure them all the time. This isn't exact so even if it's an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch off, it's no big deal. I'm going to take a second and show you something that's pretty uh, neat and a real trick that's used by a lot of professional uh, welders. If you look at the first grinding disc here on the left, this is for my 7 inch grinder. It's pretty flat. This one here, if we look at the code, it says it's a 7 inch, 1 and 1 quarter by 7 eighths. That's the diameter, that's the thickness, and that's the whole size. If we look at this one here, it says 7 inches, 1 quarter, 7 eighths. So they basically look the same. Uh, they have the same number, A24. HSP, A24, HSP. Okay, max RPMs. But one of the difference, if you look, I don't know if you can see it on the video. If I come down here, the one on the right looks a little bit higher. That's because it's cupped. Okay? If I put them like this, you can probably see it a little bit better. Alright? So what this is going to do is this whole wheel, oops, sorry, this whole wheel here is going to sit on the metal. And this is really good for giving yourself a nice flat surface. So here you have an example of what I did before with just my four inch grinder. Just clean up, getting the burrs off. And you can see here on the big three eighths piece of steel, I did the same thing. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and put this on the seven inch grinder and I'm gonna grind these two with my cup disc right here. Now these are a little bit more expensive. They're probably about $20 each, but they're really good at getting something true or pretty true and a lot of professional welders use them on their welding table. So I'm going to do that and I'll show you how it turns out. So I'm done grinding. I actually did all three instead of just the two. And I want to show you with a true example of what exactly it's doing. So if we look at them firstly, this is a 3 8 piece, the big piece. And if you look just before this, we had a whole bunch of rust all around here. That almost looks kind of black, but I didn't go and get all this white stuff like I was doing with the 4 inch. That's because it was floating and only took off a small skim of what I wanted to get. And next was that big piece I did with the 4 inch grinder. And if you go close enough, you can see where the 4 inch, 4 and a half, sorry, 5 inch grinder was digging away. But now you can see like in this corner here where I was up flushing. So wherever it doesn't look exactly like this, okay, that means that's low. So that means that section is a little bit lower. Not a huge dilemma, but you know, if you're doing some stuff in one perfect level and it's that size, it falls in that crevice, it can be a pain on a bigger welding table. And I went and did this small piece, just to give you an example of what it does from raw. You can see there's still some rust here. I wasn't trying to get all the rust off, I was just trying to get level. You can see where it was trying to dig into the side. So it was trying to keep itself true all the way. That I would just cut off as just a, an example piece for today. So to show you what exactly it does, I'm going to grab a file here, and we'll look down the edge. Okay, now this isn't machining quality or anything like that, but there we go. Nice and true, something flat, where we have nothing to catch up on. Okay, I can do it again, just making sure there's nothing on the side, and that's how it looks. Now you do have to be careful, you see on the corners, went down a bit, a little bit over there, okay? But you can see a little bit of the swirls, if you look here and here and here, 
that it took off, and that's all we want to do. And that's why those things are so good. So the way this is going to work is I have these two pieces here that are going to be the bottom half. And I'm going to have this be the other half of the die being pressed down in. So I'll just line these up anywhere on the piece of metal. I should just set it in. And now I'm just going to tack them in place with the MIG. And then I'll do the same thing for the top. And it'll be ready to go. Alright, so I've got my piece here. The four holes drilled, marked out. This is what I want to do in my bend. This is what I want to do in my degree bend. So let's put it in and see what happens. So I want this to be about there. We'll come back to that while it tries to balance. A little hard to do this while holding the camera. <laughs> so, I'm going to put the camera down for a second. We'll have a look. I'll get this in position. And then we'll see what it does when it bends. Everything's set up in the press. Uh, lined up on my mark. Got it pretty well true. And now we're going to press it. Let's see what happens. See how it turns out. Okay, the press says it's starting to put tonnage on. So that's all we need. It's just a piece of shin sheet metal. Let's see what we got. Got a piece on the other side of it. <sighs> okay, so there we go. That's how it turned out. That's not too bad. That's what I was looking for. It seems to be pretty close to the line. So, what's great about this low die is now we can use it to go make our 90 bend. So, what do you say we go do that? I'll just go and retrace the mark on the proper side. And we'll come back and bend it. Now it's time to do the 9 degree bend. Okay, a little bit more than 90. Whoops. <laughs> but we'll straighten that out. Yeah, that's not too bad. Now I just gotta go make the top half of this. So what I have done, I completed all the parts. There's the second part I made. And all the holes were pre-drilled. It's just easier for me to do that way. And I want to show you how close it came. If you look at the holes, these two holes, see they will focus. That probably won't focus. <laughs> okay, so that hole there, that hole there, they line up. And if we come over here, can see, I'll show you just how much they line up. See my finger? As we come and put it closer, you can see my finger through the hole. So, this is pretty good. You know, it's easy to tweak that to make sure it fits. Same thing over there. And this is designed in one piece of pipe, one inch piece of pipe. I just got to weld the support in, and we're done. As you can see, our low die worked pretty good. Uh, you know, this is just a couple of one-offs and there's a few things. And it's easy to cut these welds out and reuse the place for something else or weld them back in when you get a chance. So, hope you have any luck. Let me know how it turns out. Thanks very much.